Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is my week 31 to 34 pregnancy update. <sighs> So week 31 of my pregnancy was actually pretty great. I had a ton of energy. I went into kind of full on nesting mode. We had just had our baby shower the previous week and I was putting things away and you know, just like full on getting things ready. And I had tons of energy to do it. So I figured, um, I would use that energy as much as possible while I still had it because everybody tells me that you just hit this point at the end of pregnancy where you just can't handle it anymore. You're just tired. And I think I've officially reached that stage at 35 weeks, but back to 31 weeks, I was running around like crazy, getting everything done. I washed all of our baby laundry, all of the newborn stuff and the zero to three months stuff. And anything above three months, I actually put away in storage for now because I don't need to fill up her whole dresser with clothes that she can't even fit into yet. So my um, plan is to just kind of rotate them out as she gets bigger and I'll save a lot of space that way because you'd be amazed at how quickly a baby's dresser can fill up. So week 31, I also had a ton of movement. Um, she is always moving. Uh, it's a really reassuring sign, so I love it. There's times where it's kind of painful, but just knowing that there's movement is always reassuring. So I had a lot of movement then. Um, I keep looking down at my phone if you see me looking down because I have all of my notes on there. Week 31, I was also really hungry a lot. I think maybe she was going through a growth spurt because I just couldn't stop eating. Like I was just so hungry. And another fun thing that I learned at 31 weeks is it starts getting really hard to get up and down. It started getting really hard for me at 31 weeks. Um, my husband and I went to a party for a friend and I ended up having to sit on the couch. Everyone was standing and talking and like mingling and I sat myself on the couch. I was exhausted. So yeah, getting up, getting down has gotten harder and I just have to sit more often. So that was 31 weeks. Week 32, I had a follow-up appointment with the maternal fetal medicine doctor or perinatologist. Um, in my midwife's practice, it's standard that you go at 20 weeks for your anatomy scan and then 32 weeks just to kind of give you the final go ahead that everything is okay for labor and delivery. So I went to that appointment at 32 weeks and I of course picked the coldest day of the whole year was the day I had to go to the maternal fetal medicine doctor. And my appointment was at 9 a.m. I think they said the wind chill was like negative 15 or negative 20 for what time I had to leave for my appointment. So luckily I had the car started, it warmed up. Um, it really wasn't that bad, but yeah, getting there at 9 a.m. when it is below freezing was not fun. And also, I don't really have a jacket that covers my belly. I am too stubborn to buy a full-on maternity jacket, and we've actually had a pretty mild winter so far here in New York. So I've just been wearing kind of fuzzy sweaters underneath a jacket that covers my belly, but I don't have anything that zips over my belly. So that day was especially torturous because my belly was really cold. So at my maternal fetal medicine appointment, the baby's heartbeat was 165. She was moving a ton. She was actually kicking the little ultrasound um, wand. And she, was, she weighed in at four pounds at 32 weeks which is a great size. It's a pretty average size of what they think a baby should be and all her measurements look great. Everything looked great. She was head down, which was such a relief because I think at thir 28 or 30 weeks, she was breech. So I was really happy to know that she flipped back head down where she's supposed to be. And I'm really hoping she stays that way. I also started noticing at 32 weeks, anytime you're supposed to sleep on your side when you're past I think 16 or 20 weeks because if you lay flat on your back, you compress a major blood vessel which runs to your brain and you can pass out and it decreases blood flow to baby. So you're supposed to only lay on your left or your right side. I've heard you're not really supposed to lay on your right side, but you can't be expected to just always sleep on your left side. It's just not realistic. It's painful. At 32 weeks, I started noticing that I was constantly trying to sleep on my left side and then I would wake up and like my hips would just be like numb. They would hurt so bad. My hips and my lower back just from being positioned in the same spot for so long would just hurt. Even with like a propping a pillow between my legs, like nothing really worked. I'm a stomach sleeper, so I really miss those days. Like sleeping started getting hard 
at I think 28 weeks, but it's just progressively gotten worse. And now I wake up multiple times a night just trying to position myself in a comfortable way. And I also was a little freaked out at my ter- maternal fetal medicine at 32 weeks because I had gained two pounds over where I was supposed to be. Um, I think they say you're supposed to gain about a half a pound to a pound a week. And I was gaining like one to two pounds per week from my last appointment. The only time I weigh myself is at doctor's appointments um, because it's mandatory. But they do it every two weeks, so I feel like it's kind of a more accurate thing than doing it every single day and obsessing over it. I feel like my body knows what to do when it comes to gaining weight, and I'm not, you know, going off the rails, eating crazy things. So um, when I did see that my weight gain was two pounds over what it should be, it made me worry a little bit. But I'm still on track for how much you're supposed to gain at this point. So week 33 is when things started getting interesting. Week 33, I still had a decent amount of energy. I packed my hospital bag. It started feeling really real. I actually made a video of what I packed in my hospital bag. I'll leave a link for you. And I actually packed, I think three bags. Yeah, three bags. One bag is specifically for when I'm in labor. I'm bringing it up to the room. It's all the things I need during labor. And we're gonna leave the other bags in the car for them because I don't wanna be carrying around a bunch of bags in a hospital. Um, So I just need to bring what I need when I need it. So first with the labor bag with everything I want for labor. And then um, the second bag I have has my husband's clothes, my clothes, all the things we'll need for our hospital stay. And the third bag has like baby clothes and stuff we'll need for the baby for her hospital stay. And then I'm also bringing my boppy nursing pillow. I went back and forth on whether or not I was going to bring it, but then it comes in a zippered case. So I figured I would take it out when I need it, use it, put it back in the case to prevent any germs. So that was my start of week 33. Week 33 is when I feel like the baby dropped. I feel like she is in position, ready to go. I had so much pressure and cramping really down low. And um, my husband and I went out on a Saturday night to dinner and I started having like full on what I think are contractions. Like my lower back was hurting. My stomach was tensing up. I felt like I had period cramps and it kind of freaked me out a little bit, but it didn't seem like timeable. Usually they say if it's this many minutes apart, come in, or if it's this many minutes, you know, you need to do this. So I wasn't overly concerned, but I was trying to time them and I really couldn't. They were just random. So that was something that kind of alarmed me and made it feel even more real, real after packing my hospital bag. Now I'm starting to have contractions. I don't know if I set myself up for that. Um, so yeah, I had a couple contractions. I was going to call my doctor and then I just decided to go to bed. It just, not, nothing was progressing. It wasn't like I was in labor and that's, I just left it. And another little fun fact I noticed at 33 weeks is that if I eat something really sweet or something with a lot of sugar, the baby gets hiccups. So I'll feel them constantly if I drink orange juice or have ice cream or something. She will get the hiccups. Always. Week 34 was another interesting week. I told you how I was worried about my weight gain in week 32. So I had another appointment at week 34 and I heard that in like the last month or so of pregnancy, your weight gain kind of either stops or you start losing weight. So in my case, I was a little bit relieved because I didn't gain any weight from weeks 32 to 34. So it actually put me right back on target. My total weight gain at 34 weeks is 27 pounds. My goal is to stay under 30, but if it is going to stay kind of steady or decrease at this point, it'll keep me under 30. So I'm pretty happy with where my number's at, and I hope I don't go far above 30. I'll give myself to 35 before I panic, but I think I'm kind of in the last little home stretch, and technically the baby will be term, like full term in three weeks or two weeks, so I think I'll be okay. The baby was still head down at my 34 week appointment, which is great news. I really hope that she stays down, even though it's kind of painful. (laughs) At my 34 week appointment, I asked them to recheck my blood work one more time. If you saw some of my other videos, my liver enzymes were elevated when I did my glucose test at about 28 weeks or somewhere around there. And um, they were monitoring them and they went back down, but I started a new prenatal. So I just wanted to make sure that everything was still good. So they did another blood workup. I'll find out my results next week when I go for my 35-week appointment. 
And after that, I only have one more blood test. I feel like I've had more blood work done in this pregnancy than I have in my entire life. So I have one more blood test done and then I'm done. <laughs> it really is the home stretch. So my appointment was on a Thursday and then once again on a Saturday night. I don't know what it is about Saturday nights. So Saturday night, I started having a lot of really sharp pains, really down low. It kind of felt like it was in my cervix and I let them go. Like I drank water, I laid down, I just kind of was monitoring them. But it, like I said it before, it wasn't timeable. Like I couldn't time them apart. I couldn't figure out, you know, there was no pattern, nothing, you know, that I could, nothing substantial that I could call my doctor and say, this is what's going on. So um, my husband and I were monitoring it, just kind of keeping an eye on it. And I told myself, I'll take a shower. I took a shower, got in my pajamas and I'm waiting. And I'm like so tired at this point. It's almost midnight. And I told myself, I'll get till midnight. And if it's still happening, I'll call my doctor and see what she wants me to do. Because it's a Saturday night, so she'd probably want me to go to labor and delivery. So I really didn't want to do that because I was so tired. But I figured I would try and go to sleep. If it is real labor, I'll wake back up and go from there. So I went to sleep. Luckily, nothing happened. Those went away. But I really feel like the baby wants to make an appearance. I feel like each week, these contractions that I get on Saturday nights are getting a little bit more intense. And tomorrow is a full moon and a super moon. So I really hope she stays put. Um, I just, I'm not ready for her to come yet. I would like her to stay in for a couple more weeks. But yeah, tomorrow is a full moon, super moon. And I've already been having contractions, but hopefully she stays put. I also noticed that one day during 34 weeks, the baby had kind of a quiet day, which I hate because she's such, she's so active and it made me really nervous. But then the next day she was back to being borderline violent. She kicks so hard to the point where I have to get on my hands and knees and sway back and forth to get some kind of relief because I feel like she is trying to attack my organs. Like I don't know what she's doing in there, but she just moves so violently and rapidly and strong that it hurts. I also started noticing that I haven't been as hungry and I've actually had a little bit of nausea, which is a fun flashback to the first trimester where I was throwing up every day for 20 weeks. So that's a fun symptom to look back on. I haven't thrown up. It's just been a little bit of a light nausea. It's nothing unbearable. And at 34 weeks, I have no energy. I found myself all week just sitting and like trying not to fall asleep. I have a to-do list of so many things I want to get done before this baby comes and I just cannot get up to go do them. There's just this wave of exhaustion that has hit me and I really hope I can break through it and get the stuff done I need to get done before this baby comes. I did somehow find time to pack and repack my hospital bag like five times just to make sure I have everything. So I think I'm ready to go in that aspect. So that is everything I have written down for weeks 31 through 34 of my pregnancy. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know below if you're having any of the same symptoms I'm having and let me know your thoughts and experiences. So be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more pregnancy updates. I'll see you next time.